Hello, today on JMix 3D we are going to be designing a D20 die. We will start by designing the base 20 sided shape, an icosahedron. We can think about the shape as three parts, a pentagonal pyramid top, a pentagonal antiprism, and a pentagonal pyramid bottom. Alright, so to make our sketch for the icosahedron, we are going to start off with a edge polygon and we'll just pick this side so for this edge polygon I'm actually going to use a parameter to determine the side length and normally this is buried down here but if you click on this you can hit pinned toolbar and that will bring it up to here this allows you to set user parameters so I'm going to click add and I'm gonna say side length or I'll cut it down to side length and I'm gonna make this 10 millimeters alright so I'll close that and then I will open up my edge polygon again and I'm just gonna do it somewhere over here and I'm gonna make this side length and I want it to be five sided because it is a pentagonal prism that we are creating. So now I'm going to move this center point. So hit M to open up the move. I'm going to do point to point from the center point of our pentagon to an origin point, which doesn't want to be recognized. Actually, it's because. So our selection, we need to select all of that origin point is the center and target point is there so now we have this pentagon with a side length of our user defined parameter and now what we're going to do is we are going to create a line from here to the middle The next thing we're going to do is create an equilateral triangle. So the way we can think about this is this is like the base of our top pentagonal prism. And we're using this dimension to determine how far out the base of one of our sides needs to be. When we make our edge polygon a triangle, which we'll also start here and we'll define it as side length and we'll lock it to 90 degrees this time we're going to do three sided so we can think of this as like a side we're going to fold this side up except instead of actually folding it what we're going to do is we're going to make a circle from that point out so now we can sort of see where this would line up and because we want our prism to come to a point if we want to have an equilateral triangle on top of our pentagon then wherever this center line lines up with the circle created by our triangle this will give us the right angle so that we have all equal sided equilateral triangles later on. So now we're going to take everything that we don't need to actually use and we're going to create constructions out of them because we're going to have a few more things in creating the antiprism. So all of these can become so now for our antiprism we need to think about how would we take this prism and or if, if we were to extrude this pentagon and make it a prism how could we make it such that it actually is off by the 75 degrees and we know that this 
furthest distance from the center is going to be at the midpoints of the lines on a antiprism. So if this was an antiprism, we could sort of think of it as having something something where it is there we go. set that it is offset it doesn't really want me to offset that one um, but yeah so its points are going to be at the center lines so what we want to do is we want to take a circle and go at that distance and now over here we can see this point is at our furthest distance out but it lines up here. Now we're also going to reference our triangle thing because we also want the face on our antiprism to be an equilateral triangle. So all we have to do is go out from here tangential so I'll connect these points and then I'll go tangential to that until I meet this triangle and then this line is going to give us the line we need for our antiprism so I'll make this and this and that constructions and then we need to have it go to the center and it just happens that it lines up with the other one. And then I'm going to add one more thing. So these two have the same center point. But I'm going to add a little line out here. Such that we're going to be able to easily select that point later on when we need to move stuff around the center of the object. So now we can stop sketch. So our next thing we're going to be doing is making these into fifths. So I'm going to do hit S to bring up my model shortcuts, and then I'm going to do extrude. I'm going to do these one at a time symmetric. I'm going to do this uh, side length times 10. So this will just make it really, really long, bigger than we need. I'll go and I'll turn the sketch back on and I will repeat extrude symmetric again and side length side length times 10 and I need to make sure these are not joined because I need to work with them separately. So I'll do new body. Okay, so now we have our two really long pieces. Now we're going to look at these. So I hit L to start a new line. And I'm going to select that plane. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line in the opposite direction of my two things. And this is because we're working with pentagons. So when I make five of these, one will end up on one side, one will end up on the other side. So I'll just make this side line times five. I'm just gonna be out there. And then I'm going to do a circular pattern. And I'm gonna do this around the center point. And I'm gonna bring that number up to five. So this little cut here will give us a fifth of each of these pieces. So now we can make a circle and stop sketch. So now we need to keep an eye on our bodies and make sure nothing gets weird. But we'll take this section. Once again, we'll do symmetric. And we will do a distance of side length times 10, except this time we are going to intersect. So this will only keep stuff that it is touching. 
and these two are still separate bodies. So now we can turn this sketch off for a little bit and we're going to do another set of patterns. So we want to make sure we're selecting bodies, body one, body two, the axis. You can either select the origin or you can just select this edge. And then we want to make sure that we are doing five. So now when we hit OK, you can see we have the pentagonal prism or the pentagonal pyramid top and we have the beginning of our pentagonal prism. So we're going to combine these so we just have the two pieces. So we'll search for combine and I'm going to select a single target body and then a few tool bodies join. We don't want it to be a new component. We don't want to keep tools. Okay. Do the same thing down here. Select a target body, select others. And join. So now we have a bottom and a top. So now we're going to turn the sketch back on so we can get that reference point. So I'm going to select both of these by hitting control when I click and then control copy, control paste. I'm going to set my pivot by turning these bodies off and choosing that internal point. Check, turn the bodies back on. Now I'm just going to flip everything upside down. Okay. So now you can see we have this spiky shape. What we can do is intersect are two sections of spiky. So we'll do combine again, selection one, selection two, except instead of joining, we will intersect. And there we go. We have the icosahedron base for our D20 die. And to finish this off, we will combine these three sections join. So now we have one icosahedron. Alright, so our next step is going to be to fill at the edges of the icosahedron and then add numbers. To do the fillet, we're going to look up rule fillet. So this lets us us select faces or features. We're just going to select everything we can see. And you'll see it's clearly selected. And I'm going to say side length divided by 5. So that would give us a 2 millimeter fillet. And we're going to hit OK. So now you can see we have a nice rounded out icosahedron. So I'm going to start working on this face and we need to make sure that the opposite sides add up to 21. So this side down here and the side I have selected are total to 21. Um, we're going to start with 20 to determine what font size we need to use and what text we like, because it's going to be the biggest number. So we want to make sure it fits within our space. So to start the sketch, I'm actually going to come here, circle, and three tangent circle. I'm going to t select our three pieces there. And then I'm going to come down to text. And I'm going to select a point up there. I'm going to say 20. That's way too big. So maybe our height needs to be side length divided by 2, divided by 3, divided by 4. Let's move this down and see how it looks. Uh, we could do a little bit bigger. So let's try side length divided by 3. So that fits nicely within the boundaries we set up. We can center it a little bit more. 
and Ariel. Ariel looks fine. How does Bold look? Bold might be a little bit better for 3D printing applications. So now we'll hit OK. And we will stop sketch. So what we're going to do later is we're going to extrude all of the numbers in. So I'm just going to go around and do the exact same setup for all of the other numbers. Alright, so I'm getting close to finishing off all these numbers. Uh, the few things that I found, the circle isn't entirely necessary. Um, it's just nice having that center point that it creates. Um, sometimes when you snap text to things, it gets weird. So if you already have some text on the other side and you think it looks fine, then you can go ahead and snap to it. Basically all the other snap lines you don't really want to snap them to because you get restrictions that just makes your text not function properly. So here's the last number and we'll do stop, stop sketch. Now I'll see are there any other numbers that just look a little bit off um, I'll double check the 9. Go back, edit, sketch. Double click the text, not bolded. Okay. Stop sketch. Um, most of the other numbers look pretty solid. Now we get to go through and we're going to select all of these. And we are going to extrude these. That's all the faces, it says we have 20 selected. So we're gonna do minus side line divided by 10. Because we don't want to cut too far in. This is sort of what I was afraid was gonna happen. So as you can see, some of these are cutting like out, which really doesn't make sense. So They're also all, they're all cutting the same direction. Is that?
Okay, so everything is going the same direction. So we're going to cancel this. And we're going to do extrude negative sideline divided by divided by 10. So that's a lot. So let's do divided by 50. Okay. That doesn't look bad. So let's do that again. And Do that for each one of these. Alright, so now all the numbers are cut, and we're going to go over to the render workspace. Let's see, the, the metal material doesn't show super great, so we'll see how well one of the plastics will show it. And there is our D20 die. For the final rendering, I decided to go in and change the face color of the numbers. This makes them pop a lot more, and all it takes is dragging and dropping the material onto the face. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and comment on the video, and subscribe to the channel for more.